excited because for one, I've moved on from the Haunted Mansion puzzle. And if you haven't seen that video, you should watch it because that was, that was an interesting one. It wasn't exactly a very relaxing task. I'm sure you can tell at the end of that video that I was a bit stressed out. So as I had said, we were gonna move on to something other than Disney, something brighter, something more cheerful. And I thought, you know, we're still in fall. Halloween has moved past us now already. So in this video, we are going to be completing a Buffalo Games puzzle. And I'm really excited to um, start on this one because I've heard so many good things about this puzzle brand from you guys. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to a different experience, I'll put it that way. I'm looking forward to um, checking out the perfect snap that they have. I'm curious to see how these pieces feel. And you know what's awesome about this set as well? And I believe Buffalo Games in general has this in all their puzzle boxes. I'm not sure, I'm just assuming. I'm gonna have an actual poster with this one, which is gonna be so awesome. So of the two Buffalo puzzles that I bought in my autumn puzzle haul video, I think you can tell from that, you know, in that video that I really, really like this image. And this is from the Charles Wasaki collection. And he is known as the painter of Americana. And this puzzle is called Supper Call. It is 1000 pieces. It is gonna be 26.75 by 19.75 inches when it's completed. So this is gonna be a really nice size puzzle. This is gonna look really nice on my puzzle board. I'm pretty sure with this one, it's gonna take me some time to like come to terms with having to take it apart. Cause to be honest, in my Haunted Mansion puzzle, do know that that was extremely painful for me to take apart. I kind of have, well not kind of, I really do have regrets of taking that one apart. So I do plan to next time when I do attempt it again, and I will attempt it again, I'm going to frame it the next time. But I know I keep saying I moved on and I keep talking about it. So let's just, let me just kind of try to clear it from my mind. As you can tell, it's still haunting me. But anyways, I'm just going to keep staring at this so that, you know, it kind of, I got to get into this image. Okay. So first impressions, when I looked at this box, this one, as I said in my puzzle haul video, this one really caught my eye because that woman, you know, that's me, right? You know, I'm, I'm calling everybody for dinner. That's my farmhouse, my pumpkins that I picked earlier. I, I made up a whole story when I saw this picture for the first time. So I am super excited to piece this one together. It's going to be a big image on the board. It's going to look vibrant. It's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be much easier to film because um, to be honest, the Haunted Mansion one was not easy because it was a narrow vertical image. I did it again, didn't I? I have to stop talking about it. Okay, back to this one. I don't feel like this is gonna take me ages to do, honestly. It doesn't really strike me as a difficult image to complete because you have some pretty straightforward details here. You know, you got the house, the pumpkins, the, the grass, the river. I think, honestly, the hardest part of this puzzle is going to be the sky. And probably not even that hard, to be honest. But we'll see, right? And looking at the box, um, it shows you the actual size of the puzzle piece. And that's a lot bigger than what I was working with before. These pieces are a lot bigger. So I'm going to be able to see the details much easier on this one. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this one, to be honest. Um, because, again, it's, you know, that's, that's me, man. You know what? Enough talk. Let's just open this up and let's see what I think about it so far. All right, here we go. I'm really excited to open this one up. Oh, there's no sticky on this. So it looks like with this, instead of having clear sticker tabs on the sides, the box itself is actually kind of glued to the edges. I'm gonna be honest, I was expecting these to be inside of a bag of some sort. That's interesting, where's the poster? Oh, there it is. Oh, that, that took me by surprise. 
Well, at least we got a poster with this one. Let's open it up. Let's see. They call it a post. They call it a diagram. Oh, wow. Look at that, guys. This is beautiful. It has the name of the set. I'm guessing that's the set number. And look at what we have here. We have different images. Collect these other titles from the Charles Vesaki collection. So we'll put that there. And wow, I'm I'm a bit taken aback that they're not in a bag. They're just inside the box. Now I understand why the box is sealed to itself. So wow, these are nice solid pieces. Oh wow, these are very thick and I mean, obviously you don't want to like bend the tabs with all your all your might, like I just did there for a second, but very nice solid pieces. I mean, it does have some shine to it. I have LED lights on right now on my on my hallway. So I'm I'm not sure if that causes most of my problems with glare. These seem to have some glare to them. But I mean, that's a nice clear picture of details there, right? I almost don't want to take them out of the box. Look, my apples. All right, guys, are you ready? Because I am. Let's get started. So I thought I'd quickly talk about how I typically sort my puzzles. Now, to tell the truth, I never used to sort my puzzles before I got these sorting trays. And I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in purchasing them. I always set one tray for edge pieces, and that's typically where I start my puzzles. Then I set groups of pieces aside that basically either have the same colors or details in separate trays. So for example, in this puzzle set, I set aside a tray with flowers, another had pieces that belonged to the farmhouse and the fence, then one with sky pieces, one for the trees, and one for more obvious details like the pumpkins, me, the cat, and so on for the other trays. Oh, and by the way, this puzzle does have your basic shapes, but there's also some crazy looking ones in here. And as I move through the completion process, the sorting can change, especially towards the final stages of completion, which for the most part, for me at least, are the most difficult areas. Hit the like button if you always sort your puzzles before starting, and if not, let me know how you like to start your puzzles. All right, I'll shut up now till later in the video, and I'm gonna put on some banging tunes.
My goodness, what a difference. Now let's first talk about Perfect Snap. It was so satisfying how these pieces just popped in so smoothly. Now, if you just so happened to put a piece in the wrong place, you would know right away. There were actually several instances where I thought I had the right pieces in and, you know, I would feel the resistance, like it just felt wrong, obviously. And, you know, sometimes I can be a persistent beast and even though it looks right to me, it's obviously wrong. And you know, I'm still trying to jam the piece in and it would be really difficult to pull it back out. I kind of felt like the puzzle was saying, you know, that's what you get, take that, you persistent beast. You have to be really careful pulling the pieces out because you really don't want to damage any of the, the tabs. I did have some glare issues, but considering the pieces were a decent size and the colors were bright, I didn't have any problems seeing the details. This puzzle took me about 7 hours to complete in a span of about 5 days. This really was a lot of fun. It was straightforward, it was beautiful, it's simple. The only time it became a bit challenging was the areas with the flowers and the sky, but honestly even that didn't send me over the edge. I just simply changed my sorting to group certain colors together and then I got through it happily. The only negative I can really think of is that for two of the pieces, the tabs had a bit of peeling, but still overall that didn't really take away from the whole experience. But you guys were absolutely right. Buffalo Games puzzles are great value in terms of quality, price. I mean, you even get a poster with it. I really can't wait to complete more sets from this company. Let me know what your favorite collections are from this brand and what other recommendations do you have in terms of other good brands out there? Now I got another haul video coming soon of more puzzles from Buffalo Games that I picked up recently. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can check out what else I'll be completing in the coming months. All right guys, now I can finally move into my farmhouse. Now I really don't want to dismantle this puzzle. So I'm going to play around and research some easy ways to save completed puzzles without making it a permanent thing. Just in case if I want to do it again. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one.